Welcome to the official Finnovate podcast with Greg Palmer. In 2007, Finnovate set out to create a dynamic fintech showcase featuring live seven-minute demos. For more than a decade, our global event series has brought together tens of thousands of people from across the fintech spectrum to see cutting-edge technologies. Now you can find out what goes on behind the scenes as key influencers and innovators share the stories that they don't get to tell you from stage. Here's a glimpse of what we have in store for this episode. In 10 minutes, you can be able to show somebody, hey, here's your net cost of schools after scholarships or need-based grants. Here's what your family's going to pay. And to be able to do that for an advisor, that's really powerful. And now your host, Greg Palmer. Thanks for tuning in to the Finnovate Podcast. This is Greg Palmer. Earlier this week, we had a conversation with Bolin Lee from Zogo Finance talking about how to engage young people from the standpoint of financial literacy. We're going to get a little more specific on that. Obviously, a crucial component of financial literacy for young people comes at the moment where they have to decide what college they want to go to and how many loans they are willing to take out in order to get there. So. Uh, College Aid Pro is a platform that helps to answer some of those questions and give students and their families a resource. Let's go now to the interview with Joe. Joining me today on the podcast, we have Joe Messenger of College Aid Pro. Joe was on stage at Finnovate Fall 2018 a couple of weeks ago in New York, talking to the audience about how he can help with the student debt crisis. Um, they won Best of Show at that event as well. If you're interested in seeing the full demo, you can do that at finnovate.com slash videos. But Joe, for people who weren't able to see the actual demo, can you give us a background on what College Aid Pro is all about? Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, College Aid Pro, we're extremely mission-driven. And what we're all about is really fundamentally changing the way America shops for college, uh, helping families make more informed decisions around college buying. And ultimately, it's about better outcomes for young adults. And if we hit all those, it creates a real win-win-win where the families are winning because they're not overspending on college. Students have a great outcome and they're able to start their lives without uh, overburdensome debt. And then lastly, institutions are really looking to attract Gen X and Gen Y. And if you do college planning the right way, you're going to get the rest of their business. Um, so, you know, the, the member firms that we have have really uh, taken off with this. And so we're, we're excited to see where it goes. Yeah, and you can hear from that uh, that explanation right there why this resonated so strongly with our audience. It's certainly a platform with a number of different positives to it. You know, uh, one of your taglines that you guys have given us was, we want to end the student loan crisis. Do you think that word crisis is, is the right word? I certainly do. I mean, with what's happened, we've gone from $250 billion in 2004 to now over $1.6 trillion. So 50 years of issuing student loans in the country, we only issued 250 and now we're we're issuing 100 billion plus per year uh and the burden it's putting on our young adults is is really significant they're, you know they're not they're not uh, getting married they're not having kids you know they're having to make choices just to chase the money and they're and they're losing their passion yeah well and obviously starting out with that kind of debt around you can really significantly impact a lot of other aspects about how you're able to you know, go on and get a house what kind of job you're able to take um in some cases even you know whether or not you get married to somebody, the debt equation can certainly factor into that equation as well. So how did you guys make the decision to, to target this through advisors instead of trying to reach out to students directly? I know that you guys really set it up so that you know, advisors can walk through families and students as they're making this decision. Yeah, so we, we've got, I've got a great partnership with uh, Matt Carpenter, Bill Rabbit, and Dave Bowman. Uh, Dave and I are really from the certified financial planning side and those other partners, they've worked specifically with families for 15 years, thousands of them over the years. And I've had a platform, I've been lucky enough to kind of be a thought leader in the college funding space and said, you know, if, if we really want to make a shift here, we need to have advocates out and who better than financial planners? Because most people would be shocked and disturbed to know that even as a certified financial planner, there's literally two and a half pages on financial aid in the CFP curriculum, it's almost a thousand pages. So we said, look, how can we build a great platform and then have advocates for us? And we said, we'll start with the financial planners because I've got an audience and people have been starving for a good tool because it just doesn't exist. And then we said from there, then we're going to you know, build this to have a more of a direct consumer side and then also working even for college access networks for low income because that's in a whole nother piece that we really want to, you know, our mission wants to serve everybody. But we said, if we start with the advisors, have them help us create the buzz across the country. I think it's a, we have uh, people beating the drum. 
What kind of response are you getting from that community? Is this a, the, the financial planner community? Is this a community that is sort of seeing what you guys are working on and thinking, yes, finally have something here? Or are you finding you have to sort of sell them, convince them a little bit on the value of what you're able to offer? I think most of them that are uh, self-aware, they realize that there's a big gap. Whenever we talk about college funding in college, it it's always goes to college savings, 529 plans, and student loans. And very few people actually can thread the needle in actually paying for college and understanding all the different moving parts. So our software is like click of a button. In 10 minutes, you can be able to show somebody, hey, here's your net cost of schools after scholarships or need-based grants. Here's what your family's going to pay. And to be able to do that for an advisor, that's really powerful. But we do have to say, look, you can't ignore this anymore. You can't just say we don't do that. And that's what most advisors have done historically. Well, and I think one of the things that really also resonated with the audience is that the tool looks very clean. It's very intuitive and you watch it unfold. It's, it makes it very easy to see, okay, here's exactly how much I would owe. Here's what the long-term implications of that would be. And, and also here's some alternatives. If I didn't want to go to that school, I could look at a different school and maybe not have the same amount of loans or things like that, which I think is really helpful. Um, you know, I want to just come back to something you touched on, though, because is there a concern that by reaching out through advisors that you're not really targeting the kids who kind of most need the help, right? If, if a family already has a financial plan or has a financial advisor, they're sort of default in a slightly different category than the really um, lower income kids whose parents don't have access to that type of resource. So, um, you know, is that something that you guys are thinking about how you're able to kind of address that slightly more vulnerable community? Yeah, it, it is something that we're really looking at. And it, it, you bring up an interesting point because the way you shop for college and how you get discounts is completely different if you're not a need-based family. All you're looking for is schools are going to give me scholarships. And we have every scholarship for every school in the country. So uh, down to the penny. So we're able to give you an accurate projection of those. So people that won't get aid, that's what they're looking for. But on the other end of the spectrum, you've got high need families, lower income families that they rule schools out based on the sticker price of $80,000 when at the end, of the end of the day, they could probably go there for free if they can get in. So we're actually working with uh, some college access networks currently to try and figure out if we can gift them subscriptions for their college advisors um, and, and really make a, an impact for them as well. That's great. I mean, that sounds like an awesome program. And hopefully you get some traction there as well, because I think it really will start to tackle the root of this problem. So, you know, I, I don't actually talk about this too much, but I was an English major way back in the day. I won't say how long ago I graduated, but um, I, and I do also, for the record, have a little econ under my belt as well. But, but do you think your platform would have tried to talk me out of it? Is, is majoring in English and graduating with student loans just about the worst idea in the world? <laughs> uh, it, it English is one of them that you want to kind of consider what, what are you going to do with that? So, but it, with all majors, what we would say is if you need to look at this, we run a system in there called college pre-approval. You need to know what you have before you need to take student loans. And we would say never take out more in loans than you think you're going to make when you graduate from school. Um, so, you know, if that average English major is coming out making 35 or 40,000, don't take out more than loans to get that degree. That's what kind of what we would say. So we're, I'm not anti certain programs, but you know, you got to attach some meaning to the return on the investment of that education. Sure, sure. Well, and I think this gives me an excuse to look down my nose even further at, you know, classics majors, history majors, things like that, <laughs> which are maybe even slightly less valuable than a degree yeah. in English. Although for any other English majors listening, you could always go into conference planning, get into <laughs> fintech uh, event organizing, and you never know where that might take you. So um, this has been a really interesting conversation. You know, what, what do you think are the next steps for you in College Aid Pro as you look to build on the momentum that you were able to generate at Finnovate with your best of show win? I mean, the biggest thing we're looking for now is partnerships. We're talking to institutions about how do we build this into their platforms for them, make it valuable for their distribution channels. And then also it's, it's working to uh, make integrations with other folks so that we can make it easy and seamless. Advisors want to have you know, click of a button and the less friction we can create for them, the better. So I think the sky's the limit um, and we're just not happy. Yeah, no, I think that sounds good as well. And, and hopefully Finnovate has helped you on your way, creating some opportunity for you. So again, the, the platform is called College Aid Pro. We've been chatting with Joe Messenger and I would recommend that you check out their video from Finnovate Fall and take a moment to learn more about them. And for anybody who is looking at uh, having to tackle this question themselves in their own private life with you know kids who are about to go to college or things like that. I, I think you'll especially really find the value of it. It's one of those platforms that we see on stage at Finnovate that's really accessible, intuitive for 
anybody to understand. You don't have to be a financial planner. You don't have to be a banker to really understand the value of it. So um, I would highly recommend checking it out. And Joe, thank you very much for joining me. It really is a great platform. And as I was listening to Joe talk, I couldn't help but think back to what it was like when I was applying for colleges and how cavalier a lot of my fellow students and I were when looking at the amount of student loans that we were taking on. I don't think any of us really understood exactly what we were getting into. In some cases, it works out. In some cases, it didn't. But the more information that we have there, the better. So again, uh, this is the second of a two-part series on young folks and banking and financial technology. Check out the earlier episode with Bolun Lee for a more complete picture there. As always, go to Finnovate.com for information on future events. We have our European show coming up next in Berlin in February. Then we'll be returning to San Francisco in late May. And don't forget, the discount code Finnovate Podcast will save you 20% off on tickets for whatever Finnovate event you are willing and able to attend. As always, thanks for listening. Thanks for joining us on the Finnovate Podcast this week. Brought to you by the team behind Finnovate and produced in association with Provoke Media. Make sure you tell your friends about the show, leave us a review on iTunes, SoundCloud, or wherever you listen to our show, and check out our upcoming events at finnovate.com.